Alrighty hosses, welcome back. And in the last tutorial, what we did is we made a really basic tree view. It kind of looks like a simple spreadsheet program right now. And I mean, this thing is pretty boring. I mean, <laughs> you can't sort it, you can't, you know, interact with it, you can't edit it. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of things. First of all, how you can make those columns sortable, which is the easiest thing ever. And also how you can handle callbacks. In other words, um, handle user interaction so whenever they select a row something happens so this is all the code from the last tour I just took all the comments out since it was kind of cluttered <coughs> oh, 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 oh. whoa Bessie wow that's embarrassing all right so right in your loop whenever you create the columns what you can do is I'll show you the code to make them sortable. So for each column, what you do is you actually set sort column ID and you just pass it in the ID of that specific column, which is remember I. So actually we can just run this right now and check it out. So that way, you know, before we couldn't sort them, but now if you click at the top of any column, then it orders. So if the column is just regular text like um, you know letters, then it orders it alphabetically, and any integers it orders it numerically, so on and so forth. So that was the easiest thing we have ever done. And now let me tighten this up, and let me move this right here. It's not like my code all cluttered. All right. So now we got some cool columns that we can sort, but we still can't handle user interaction. In other words, whenever a user clicks one of these rows, nothing happens. So it's just you know data that they can look at right now. Well, anytime you want to handle user interaction, then this is what you do. Say handle um, selection. Good enough. So. The first thing we need to do is we need to get whatever row the user selected. So in order to do that for your tree view, all you call is get selection. So this is going to return whatever row they selected, either this one or this one, whatever. So from there, we can connect a callback method. So selected row, and I'll just connect the change signal and we'll just call like self item selected all right so the change signal of course is a signal that gets emitted whenever the user selects or in other words changes a row and also um a kind of weird thing to note whenever your program first starts out i'll show you guys this and well i can't show you because my code's not complete i didn't create this function but whenever your program first starts out the first row is selected by default so this signal gets emitted right away. So just uh, keep note of that. If you notice that something weird is going on in your program and you didn't call it specifically, it's going to call this method essentially as soon as your program first boots up. So now we said whenever the user selects a row, call this method. So now I have to create that method. All right. So I'll say uh, user selected row toe. User selected his toe. All right, so def item selected, and we need to pass it in self and selection. Now, the selection, of course, is just going to be a reference to that row. And here, let me do this. Selection, get selected. All right, so essentially, your selection is broken up into two parts, the model which is the entire data model and the row, which is a reference to that row. So with those two pieces of information, we can pretty much pull out whatever they selected really easily. So if row is not none, and this is just so we don't get any weird bugs, then we can just print out their information. So name, and in order to access a specific column or Let's say they selected um, this row, but we only want to access like their name or their age and do something with it. Then what we do is this, we call model, 
which is the dad model, and the row, and what value this is doesn't matter. I mean, we never know explicitly, is it row 10, 13? We just pass in row and it takes care of it, and zero. So remember, zero is essentially the first column, one is the second one, and three, or excuse me, two is the third column or their profession. So let me just copy this and let's print out a name, age, job, and blank. All right, so their name is zero, age is one, job is two, and I'm just gonna print a blank line. So looking sweet. Check it out. And uh, it's trying to print out an integer. So I can actually do this. Do it the real e lazy way. So if you're ever trying to print out an integer and it gives you this error message, type error can't convert int to string implicitly. You can either print it out like this or what you can do is you can do this. Just type S str and then throw your integer in there and it's gonna take that integer and convert it to a string. So, you know, whatever you wanna do. So now hopefully, check this out. So you know what I was saying before that whenever your program first boots up, it selects the first row by default. So that's why this printed it out right here before we even clicked anything inside the program. And now what I can do is I can just start clicking these and they print out. So boom, and it prints out however you formatted it, or maybe you don't want to print something out. Maybe you want to, you know, start downloading something or start sending messages to whatever, whatever your program does. And also check this out. It doesn't matter if we, you know, sort these however we want. All of the IDs, they never get messed up. Bucky Roberts still prints out properly. Emma Anderson, looking good. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is not only how you make a tree view, but the model behind it, which is the list store, and how everything is automatically connected, all the hard work is taken care of, and it's also how you can, you know, make your column sortable, select, you know, handle the user selection, and it's pretty awesome. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna be covering something else. I'm sure you guys are getting kind of tired of tree views, but for now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.